Hello, I'm Eric Martin, lecturer of mechanical engineering at the University of Maine. We're going to take an introductory look at SMath Studio. SMath Studio is a free math computer application, computer program. SMath is similar to MathCAD. If you've used any of the 15 or earlier versions of MathCAD, the setup will be very similar. If you've used the newer Prime or Express, it'll be somewhat similar. If you haven't used MathCAD before, that's also okay because we're going to go through learning SMath in these videos. To download, just go to smath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the environment of SMath, how to assign variables and units, math and result formatting, text formatting, Greek letters or symbols, subscripts and superscripts, and writing and editing equations. In the second video, which I'll also have a link to, We'll look at angle measurements, trigonometric functions, vectors and matrices, differentiation and integration, user-defined units and change of temperature, and then finally plotting. Let's go to our browser and take a look at how to download SMath. So in our address bar, we'll just go smath.com. And here we see that it's free. It's a what you see is what you get editor version I use is Studio Desktop. There's also a version on the Windows Store that probably has the same functionality, but everything seems to be inside menus. The version that I've been using is the desktop version, which has a lot of icons that we can use for quick access to the tools. So you can click on the link. It'll prompt you to save the file. You can download it and install it. I've already done that. So let's go to SMath. So on our desktop, we have SMath Studio. We'll start that. Looks like we see a sheet of paper with a grid on it. I'm going to open up one of the files that I've been working on. And you'll notice that it has pretty much the outline that we went through in our introduction. So let me zoom in. And to zoom, all I'm doing is I'm just using my control key and my mouse wheel, and I can zoom this way. I can also use my icon down here where I can, it looks like I can go one at a time, plus 25%, minus 25%, but I find that the scroll wheel is really just the best way to scroll or to zoom. I can use my scroll wheel to scroll up and down, again pressing the control button and scroll will zoom in and out. As I mentioned, we have a grid. If you want to remove the grid, we can go into View, and then we can see that we have Grid, and I can deselect it, and now it looks like a sheet of paper without any grid. I like having the grid, so I'm going to keep it there. We have toolboxes. Can't really do much with the moving. You can a little bit, but there's not a lot of additional toolboxes, at least with the version that I'm using. I probably shouldn't have moved it so much. Now I can't go back to the original view. There's also some toolboxes on the right. And then these toolboxes will have a lot of the operations that we have. And this little plus sign that you can expand and minimize. And we'll talk about those different tools as we go through the video. To go between different pages. We have pages up here. And it looks like we have the original worksheet. So I can go to the original worksheet when I first started SMath and then go back to the one I'm working on now. And then finally, we'll talk about the document layout, which is down here at the bottom right. And when I zoom out a little bit, we can see again, it looks like that sheet of paper. That's on no bounds. I can go to printing bounds. And as I scroll down, we can see that we have the page in between. And then we can go to, I think what's called pages view. That's what we had earlier. Not no bounds. Here's no bounds right there. And it looks like it's just big, one infinitely sized piece of grid paper. So I usually use either the pages view. One of the things with the pages view is that if I want to move, I'm going to select this text box and I'm going to click and drag it and I can move it around. I can move it down a page but I'm not able to move it back up a page, which is kind of a pain. I can't go back up to the first page. So if I go to down here below, go to printing bounds, I'm now able to go beyond that. 
I'm not sure why that's an issue, but that's something I've noticed. To show a little bit more about moving around and copying and pasting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the no bounds. And that'll give us some more room. And so I can select more than one either text box or math box. You can see how they're all selected there. And I can click and I can drag them around and they'll all move around. If they're selected, I can go Control C and I'll put my cursor somewhere else and then hit Control V and I'll scroll out and can see how that's all done there. If I want to delete a box, I have to select, I have to use a window. So I'm going to drag and select that window. I can hit delete or I can do multiple windows or multiple boxes and hit delete. Something else that can be done, let's just grab, let's just grab a bunch of boxes again and copy them. I'll just move some of them around so I can select one and then use the arrow key. You can see how, how that icon shows up when it's at the corner or the edge of the box. And what I can do is I can select these boxes right here and I can align them. I've got align horizontally and align vertically. So horizontal, well actually horizontally, if I do that, they're all going to line up on top of each other, which is not what we don't want, but I'll just show you. All right, so I don't want that, so I'm going to go control Z to undo it. And then I'm going to instead align vertically. You can see how they're all lined up. And I'll select these and I want to have them so that they are aligned, so the tops are aligned with one another. So that would be horizontally. And I can do that with these two as well. And if I want to go even further, I can align that and so forth. So that was our environment. Let's take a look at our variables and units. To assign a variable, we type the variable and then we just press the shift and the semicolon or basically the colon. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's say that X and we want to make that equal to, so I do the shift semicolon or the colon and it gives me that little colon with the equal sign. I didn't type colon equal sign. Again, I typed the shift and the semicolon and uh, let's just make this to be five. And then we hit enter and that's that. We're going to do the same thing with Y shift semicolon and let's make that to be 10 and then we can hit enter and we can see it's as easy as that now if i want to do an operation let's make z and we're going to assign this again using the shift semicolon we are assign this to be x plus y all i'm using is just my plus and then we can use the minus, the asterisk, the division sign, or the slash, parentheses, and the caret for different operations. So I'll just do that. Now I can do a couple things. If I hit the equal sign, or press the equal sign on my keyboard, it's going to give me the answer. I can also come down here and just type Z equals, and that gives me the answer of 15. Now I just moved something around and notice how we have a red box and the reason for that is because the way that SMath works is that it looks at the variables and it starts from the top left and it goes to the right and then downward. And so since my five, I'm sorry, since X is lower than the Z, it doesn't recognize it. So I can do one of two things. I can bring my Z down, that's one way, or I can bring my X up. And now it doesn't recognize why, so I can do that. Now I can also align these, and when they are aligned, if I align them horizontally, that will work out because, again, it goes from left to right. Let's now look at units. So what we'll do is we'll assign B for a base, and we'll assign that to be, let's say, 50 feet. And I'm going to type the single quote and then FT. And when I type the single quote, as we see here, that's going to create a unit of whatever we assign, in this case, feet. I'm going to hit enter, and then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to type H, and let's assign that to be 2, and then I'll type M for meters. And since I didn't do the single quote, I have to press the tab to insert. I'm going to press tab, and then click somewhere else. And then notice how both our units are in blue that tells us that they have been assigned as units. To find the area, we will make a new variable A, and then we'll assign that using the colon operator, shift semicolon, and B 
times h. So b asterisk h. We'll type the equal sign. And we see that smath has automatically converted the feet into meters and then multiplied that by 2. What we can do here is we can even see what b is in meters. So I'll type b equals, and we see that it's 15.2 meters. And so 15 times 2 is about 30, and that's what we see for our result. If we want to see what b is in inches, I can select the results box. And we notice here at the end we have a black box. And let's type inch. And I either have to precede the inch by a single quote or press tab at this point. And then I can hit enter or click somewhere else and we see it's 600 inches. So 50 times 12 is 600. I can even change my area into inches squared or feet squared. We'll do feet squared. It'll be a little bit of a smaller number. So I'm going to select the results box and then the black box after the unit. And I'm going to type feet FT. And I want to raise this to the second power. If I just leave it alone, if I just press tab, it's going to give me our meters feet, which is, you know, 50 times 2, 100, and it's going to give us both units. But we don't really want that. So I can press feet and then tab. I have to assign this as a unit before I raise it to the second power. I raise it with a caret, the shift 6. And we can see how that pops up there. And I can type 2, and that will give us foot squared. If you're looking for more units, you can come under Insert, and we can see Unit here, or we can even get there by the shortcut of Control w and we see that SMath has lots of different units. Now, if there's units that you need or want, but SMath doesn't have, in our next video, I'll show you how to create your own units. Let's look at something else concerning units. Let's uh, give ourselves a force of 50 pounds. So I'll type 50, and then I'll use my single quote, LB. We can see the tooltip showing pound mass, but it's pretty small, so let's say we missed it. And let's do pressure, P, is equal to, we'll say F divided by A. We have already assigned A. Let's do the equal sign. And we see that we have kilograms per meter squared. So this is mass divided by area. Well, we wanted pressure, which is force divided by area. So for our units of pound, we have to type LBF. We can see how that converts it to force. Now when I hit enter here, we have pascals. But I can change this to PSI, press tab, then enter. Or I can even do, how about LBF, tab, slash, inch, tab, and then raise that to the second power. Then that gives us pounds per square inch, which is PSI. If we want to do a different unit, select the unit and press backspace. Then type the new unit. Let's do KSI. That's kips per square inch. And this will be a really small number, as we see here. All right, let's look at math and results formatting. Here we've got a couple different variables, A and B. And notice that I can reassign B, even though I signed it to be 50 feet here, I can reassign it to be 65 here. And what I'll do is I'll just type down here, and I'll type B equals. Notice it says 65. But if I drag this box above the B, the second B, I suppose, is now back to my assigned value of 50 feet, except it converts it to meters. For these equations, B is equal to 65. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select on this first one, A plus B, and I'm just going to press the equal sign, and we can see that we have 64, I'm sorry, 65.417. Well, I would like to change the precision or the decimal places, and so I'm going to select the equation or the results box. I'm going to right click. Then I can come down here where it says decimal places, and it opens up another point, and then we can see that it's set for four decimal places. And you might say, well, I only see three decimal places there. That's because trailing zeros isn't activated, so let's click on trailing zeros. And then there's our fourth decimal place. So I'm going to right-click again, go to decimal places. Right now it's under decimal places, but I can change it to what we call significant figures mode. And when I do that, it will be four significant figures. So it'll be 65.42 probably. Yep, 42. So by selecting the results box and then right clicking and changing the decimal places, that's for that value only. But we can also change it globally by going into tools, options, and calculations. There are tools, options, then calculation, 
And we can change the number of decimal places. We can change that to be one decimal place. And then we can change our significant figures mode and trailing zeros. Let's change that to three decimal places. And it's kind of poor wording here because this decimal places really means either decimal places or significant figures if significant figures mode is enabled. So I'll hit OK. And I'll go ahead and select my A times B, and that's going to equal. And we see it didn't work. And I just realized this as I was making the video. The reason it doesn't work is because I had already made the equation A times B. If I do it again, we now see that we have our three significant figures. And so it won't work for A and B, or A slash B, I should say. It's going to go to four decimal places. We can select it and change it to whatever we want. The asterisk here tells us what our global settings are at. So let's change this to four significant figures, and then there is our four significant figures. One other thing about our math boxes is I can select my box, right-click, and there should be a spot here that says Show Description. And when I do so, we have this little description box, and so we can call this Division. We can come to this box right up here, right-click, Show Description, and we can call this Pressure. If I want to move the description box around, I just click on the three dots, and then if I want to move it to the left, I just drag it to the left. If I want to move it to the top, I drag it to the right and goes to the top. If I drag it to the right again, it'll go on the right side. So it can go either before, on top, or after. Let's spend a few minutes looking at text formatting. So to create a text box, there's a couple different ways. So I can start typing and type A, and it looks like it wants to set up a math box, which is our area that we calculated earlier. But if I just type space, notice how it changes to a different type of box. It's not italicized. It's a little bit bolder. I can backspace, and it won't convert it to a math box. And then I can type an introduction to SMath. If I want to make a new line, I need to press Shift-Enter by Eric Martin. And then if I hit Enter, I'm going to get out of the box. So I can come back to the box and just click on it and correct typos and I can even adjust the length of the box. Another way to create a box is by pressing the double quote. If I wanted to either make this bold or italicize or underline, I just press Control B, Control I, and Control U. And we can see how we can do that. And we can do that for any part of our text as well. Control B. For more options, you can select the box and right click. And there's some options for align spacing, alignment, whether you want to left or right justify it or center it. And there's also some more options up here for bold, italicized, underline that we just did with our shortcuts. But we can change the text color and the background color and even put a box around it. So I can come here and I can put a box around my mechanical engineering. Can't see the underline anymore, but that's what it does. We often use Greek letters in our engineering equations. So to create a Greek letter, all we need to do is type the letter and then type control G. I have some examples. Uppercase and lowercase Q produce uppercase and lowercase theta. W produces omega. S produces sigma. And we can even do pi. I'll type P. Control G, and that gives us our pi symbol. I can even make it equal or type equal, and it shows us that it's 3.14 using the global settings of three significant figures that we had earlier. If I want to go back to the regular P, I just type Control G again, and now it probably won't know what P is because we haven't assigned P. Let's say P, and we'll make that equal to 2 times b plus 2 times h. As I was typing that, I realized that I reassigned b. So I'll hit equal. It's going to give us a problem here, I bet, because our units won't match. There we go. Our units don't match. And that's because of me reassigning this b is equal to 65. So I'm going to just select this and type delete. It'll give us some other problems because a doesn't have any units, as it does there. 
but it fixes our perimeter that we have here. We've discussed using a superscript using the caret. Now we'll also look at a subscript, which is made just by pressing the period. So let's make this equation. The moment of inertia of a rectangle is equal to the base times the height cubed divided by 12. And so I, and I'll do a subscript, so I will press the period button, and then I'll do a rectangle. And we're going to assign that to B, so I'll do the colon, base times the height. I'll do the caret, which raises it to the to a power. It'll be the third power. Now I want to divide this whole thing by 12, and so I need to press the space bar one time, two times, and notice how it changes this area right here. And when I press the slash, all of that will be divided by the number 12. And this will give us a probably in meters to the fourth power. Let's see. There it is, meters to the fourth power. Let's make this millimeters to the fourth power. So I'll type mm. I'll need to convert this to a well, I'll show you what happens if I don't convert it to a unit. I'll convert, uh, raise that to the fourth power, and I really won't know what to do. The problem is, is I never converted mm to a unit, so I might be able to press, if I press tab here, it's going to shift to the next box, as it does down here. So let's come back here, and let's do the single quote before it, and now that converts it to millimeters to the fourth power, and that's what we want. Although we have a good concept of what our equations should look like, we have to get some good practice in how to use the arrow and space keys. So let me give you an example. It's just a quadratic equation. So let's have a is equal to 3, b is equal to minus 5, and then c is equal to 2. And line these up to make them look a little prettier. Bring them up here. So we have x, and we'll assign that to be a value of minus b, plus or minus. To do the plus or minus, we need to go into our arithmetic box. You can see there's an operator plus or minus. I don't think there's a shortcut for it. It's not used very often, so that'll be fine if you don't have a shortcut. And we want to do the square root. There is a button here for the square root, and there is a shortcut of the backslash. The backslash is typically over your enter key. There's my square root. And there's also an nth root button as well. Looks like it's control backslash. So what do we have? We have b, we raise that to the power of 2. Now I want to subtract 4ac, and I need to use my arrow key, because if I do a minus sign, it's going to be the 2 minus, and that's not what I want. So I've got a backspace here, and then you can use my arrow key to basically include the b squared. And now I'm going to hit the minus sign, 4. I can type a, and I think it's going to multiply it, but if I type b, it's going to be ab. So I need to do a times b. I'm sorry, that should be c. And now I want to divide this by 2a. Well, I want to divide the entire portion here. So I need to press a space bar a few times. Notice how every time I press a space bar includes a little bit more. And I can use my arrow key to basically un... Well, let's see here. I guess I need to reselect to, to start over. So it doesn't really matter where I select here. I can, again, press my spacebar a few times, and I want to divide this by 2 times a, and that should give us, if I hit equals, our two roots for the polynomial with coefficients of 3, negative 5, and 2. So again, it takes a bit of practice. Don't be surprised if you don't get it the first time. Just keep trying. Thank you for watching.